<laughs> New phrase. Be free. On my way to Transkei, and it's a long way. I will definitely not make it in one day, except if I'm very, very lucky. So I'm hitchhiking, taking minibus taxis, whatever comes along, donkey car. And I'm especially nervous today because this is going to be a very hard day. I'm not sure how the transport will unfold. Also, I don't know where I'm going to sleep and I have a very limited budget. So I'm not expecting it to be an easy day, but it should make interesting vlogging and viewing for you, hopefully. My plan is just to take it bit by bit, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. That seems to be the best policy in situations like this. Just take it a bit by bit, chew off as much as you can handle. And hopefully we'll get through the day. The upside for today, it's sunny and there's a lot of traffic. I just want to say thank you to the people of Forest Gate Eco Estate. I had a wonderful stay. I feel rested and ready for the day. So let's see what happens. I didn't stand there for too long and I got a taxi, minibus taxi for 20 bucks all the way to the other side of Plettenberg Bay. So I'm standing here now. But he said I must walk down like a few hundred meters down there. And there's a hitchhiking spot. So that's the start of the day. Here I am in front of Old Nick Village, just outside Plettenberg Bay. How will it go? Let's see. That guy gave me a lift, very nice, thank you guy, but he only went a few kilometers and then he realized he forgot something in Petermuk Bay. So now he turned around of course and left me here and this is a really, really bad place for hitchhiking. Big trucks can't pull off here, there's a curve, so I don't know, at least it's beautiful. Okay, so um, good news, I didn't wait long, the man is back, he got what he needed to get, and I'm back in the car, so here we go. So driving down in this part of the garden route, besides it being extremely, extremely beautiful and picturesque, the road is really decent. So you don't need a 4x4 you're from overseas to come and travel here. Yeah? It's a very decent road, easy to travel and a beautiful space to travel here. Thank you very much for the lift. Uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell me a little bit of something about yourself. Hi, my name is Ian. So I recently to, uh, came to Plettenberg Bay and um, just enjoying myself, man. Tell us you go well and be safe. We'll see you again. Thank you, sir. Here I am, and to be honest, I'm not even exactly sure where I am, but it's beautiful here. Yeah. And it's quiet and tranquil and amazing. It's such a great road to travel down, even to hitchhike down. It's like, I can do this easily, man. It's a pleasure. So I'm a bit closer to my destination. We'll see what happens now. There's still quite a bit of sunlight. Let's see how far I get. My biggest worry is a place to sleep especially when I'm in the middle of nowhere because it's also winter now but uh, this is part of the adventure the uncertainty and the dopamine kick when you're somewhere that 
where anything can happen, that's all part of it. So let's continue. I uh, stood there for about, I don't know, half an hour. Got a minibus taxi left all the way to uh, Iman's dog. And we'll see from there, but it's getting to be afternoon now, so I don't know how far we'll get, but we'll see. I'm in another taxi and it's 30 kilometers to Jeffrey's Bay from Riemann's door because it's getting pretty late now and hitchhiking in the evening is a no-no like some of you might have seen in my previous vlog it doesn't work so I'm gonna see if I can get a backpackers in Jeffrey's Bay and overnight there tonight I'm here at Island by backpackers in Jeffrey's I think they have a dorm room available seems like it right in front of the ocean the last time I came to this town was many, many years ago, decades ago, when I was a young man. And if I remember correctly, it was a small town. But maybe it's my imagination, but it seems like a city now, it's huge. I was at the same backpackers, and I didn't have money to stay here. Because I just hitched hike with nothing to transcribe. And I slept on a beach in front here. It's a bit cold to do it now, but uh, I remember that now, it's an interesting memory. Life as a travel vlogger is not easy. It's tough. Life on the road, man. Especially on a low budget. Hitchhiking, standing for hours next to the road. Eating bad food, sleeping badly often. Stressing. But there is a method behind the madness. And a reason behind the madness. There's a reason why I am addicted to this lifestyle. Behold, the good side of being a rock. Jeffreys Bay is popular among surfers as a surf capital due to the right hand point break at Supertubes Beach. Beach palms and surfers from all over the world come here to soak up the sun and gulp down salty seawater after taking a tumble from their surfboards. It's a real world! <laughs> <laughs> New friends! After getting some food and libation in town, I headed back to the backpackers, all the while reminiscing on the strangeness of this life I chose. I'm here at the island by backpackers and surf camp in Jeffers Bay. Not far from PE, planning my next move. It's a very surfy place. See all the young surfers sitting there chatting to each other in a corner. Um, swapping surf stories. So yeah, this is a very surfy place internationally known for surfers coming here to surf these waves. Yeah, so my name's Amir, I'm from the UK. Um, I just came in from a surf. It was quite a chill surf, but my first surf in South Africa, so um, I'm really happy with it and it was a lot of fun. Any wipeouts? Uh, a couple. Um, I almost hit the rocks as I was coming in, so that was a bit, a bit sketchy, but I uh, managed to. Impressions get of Jeffrey's Bay and the surf and the beach? Impressed? In impressions of the, the oh, surfing. Oh, it's incredible. Beach. Yeah, I mean, this place overlooking the beach, um, so easy to get out into the surf within like five minutes. Um, Jeffrey's Bay itself is a lot bigger than I expected. Um, I'm going to go on this tour today and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing a bit more of it. Mm. What's your name sir? Tell me what, is, what do you do here? Uh, my name's Liam. I'm from Jeffrey's Bay. I've lived here my whole life and I run the, the, surf, the surf shack. So from here obviously we have all the soft tops there, all the hardboards this side, all the wetsuits behind me. And we do, well we do rentals, so he just rented a board and 
can go surf yourself, but also I do um, surf lessons. So if you're a beginner to intermediate, I can take you surfing and we can get you standing on a board, uh, standing on a wave, get your first wave, anything you can do, we got you. <laughs> you may ask yourself, does one ever get used to the insecure feeling of not being sure of where you are going, what will happen, or where you will sleep? Truth be told, no. I am often overwhelmed with anxiety, fear, and potentially debilitating feelings of insecurity. I'm standing here waiting for the taxi to email door. I keep on planning stuff, but then I keep on changing my mind. So here's the taxi, we have to go. But all I can do is to take some form of action with the hope that at some point things will improve again, that the sun will shine again on a beautiful day while I take in some magnificent vista. This life has to be taken bit by bit, with all its good and bad parts. Currently I am on my way to a place I have never visited before, King Williamstown. Why? Because that is where this stranger is going. I am sitting back and allowing fate to take its course and to keep the fear at bay. I am laughing. I am silent on the outside, but internally I am laughing with crazy abandonment. There seems to be no better alternative. Here I am, I got dropped in the main street, or one of the main streets of King Williamstown. It's too late to continue now. It's a very busy city. I'm a bit nervous because I don't know this place. I don't know where I'm going to sleep. I might have to pull all night or somewhere, I'm not sure. We'll see. And uh, then continue tomorrow. But this is the dangerous stretch and a bad stretch because after this it will be in Tata, which is a dangerous city. And I need to get through all this now to get to the final destination with a very low budget. So let's see where we can stay awake all night or maybe if we're lucky we get a place that's really, really cheap to stay at. I'm here at the Shell Garage and it's one of those shitty situations. I can't afford any place here, even the cheapest place is way more than I can afford for one night stay. I went to the police station and asked him about a safe space to spend the night. They say, well, there's no shelter here. Even the cells are full. So I'm just gonna have to spend the night somehow until the sun comes up. I got myself a bottle of sweet Multana wine to see me through the night. And uh, yeah, now it's just one of those shitty situations where I'm pulling an all-nighter in a town I don't know. This is a very strange town. I've walked all through the streets now with all my bags and stuff looking for just a bar at least where I can sit. There's no bar. It's expensive. Accommodation is scarce and expensive. Now I'm in the spur. Of course now I can sit here and work a bit and drink a beer. And my only option after that is to tough it out in front of the police station on the benches until the sun comes up. But it's a weird town. Man. So it's me and the spur and then police station benches for the rest of the night. Not very pleasant. I always laugh in these situations because that's all you can do is laugh. But uh, I wouldn't uh, advise you to come to King Williamstown for a holiday or for a visit or anything because it's pretty shitty. Nothing to do here. And it's expensive. I don't know why because it's not really a great place. Here I am, the last one to leave, dreading the long night ahead. <laughs> I'm here at the police station and all I can do now is make myself as comfortable as possible and get through the night. Luckily the police guys are pretty cool and friendly, but yeah, here we go. And my two friends. So we spend the night together. That's my posse for the night. See you tomorrow. Just after six, made it through the night. Yeah. Now we're still here waiting for the sun and I've got my friends here. Yes. My new friends that spend the night with me talking all night. I talk all night, I sleep all night. <laughs> 
A čim je? Olani. Olani. Ja. Amadala. Amadala. Snar. There you go, yeah. Friends everywhere you go. I'm here at the taxi rank. They say it's a bit early. Only about 9 o'clock. So I've got two hours to take some footage of King Williamstown and show you a bit of the town before we move on. And they say I can leave my bags here. It should be safe. And then I'll come back at 9 o'clock and then we'll take the taxi to Mtata and then from Mtata we go to Port St. John's. Okay. What's your name, sir? What's your name? Sigabe. Sigabe. Come on, come on. I want to see if I can get a place that sells a semi-decent coffee here. There's a very big spa here, so we can say that there's decent shopping places in King Williamstown, which is up or a farm's up for him. One of the biggest spas I've ever seen in my life. I'm just taking a stroll through town and the person that gave me a lift to the taxi rank, it's like they kind of spot us. They said it's not gonna cost me anything to take me to the taxi rank, but they take people so they don't each hike. So they want customers obviously. And she said to me that I'm the first white guy she's seen taking a taxi to Mtata since she's been here and she's been here since January and it's June now so a mulungu like me or a white guy taking a taxi it's quite rare around here everywhere but especially around here so some kind of record I'm making I don't know as the name suggests King Williamstown was named after a British king no doubt just another greedy colonizer who adored the prospect of adding another jewel to the royal coffers. The symbols of authoritarian plunder can be found all over the place in the form of its magnificent old buildings and statues, some of which have been desecrated by political parties in the past. This man is doing, making a living collecting cans. What's your name, sir? Uh, Ricardo. Ricardo. How long have you been in town? Long time. I've been here from 1994. Wow, that's long. I'm, comfort, I'm, I'm, I'm from Sierra. Okay. Sierra. You like it here? Um, I like it here. Having breakfast, collecting cans. Yeah, man. Uh, cool, but I was, I was, I was laughing this at, at the bunker. I was getting one. <laughs> cool, Ricardo. Have a good day, man. Zombie land, Totsi land, zombie land. I have to be careful around here. Street vendors are setting up for the day. A lot of nice buildings around there. Quite a beautiful church. This is the Sacred Heart Church, claimed by some to be the most beautiful church in South Africa. This town has really cool old buildings, so if you eat the old buildings, that's worth watching in this town. Quite cool. Must have been the gem of some empire at some stage. There is no lack of fast food here from here. I can see McDonald's, Kentucky, uh, Spur down there where I was last night. So, lots of fast food. Do you have good coffee? How good is your coffee? Is it filter coffee? No filter coffee here, like often in uh, these types of towns yet. But I'm keen, I've never seen shamrock pies. It's like an Irish pie company in uh, King Williamstown. Let's try a shamrock pie. That will be my my uh, breakfast and lunch. Oh, if it's steak and kidney, may I make it a steak and kidney? It's good. Thanks. It's a bit of dried meat hanging out there, and the pie is broken. That's not a good sign. Should I take it back? It's 
could make me sick. So I'm asking for another pie because that one is dodgy, but I'm getting another one, I think. Yeah, you get a different one. Thank you. Show that, take one there, give that one back to the people. Thanks, man. You know, I don't want to sit on a minibus taxi and start getting the shits because once you're in a minibus taxi, you're in. There's no getting out. Okay, let's try the Shamrock Irish Pie. Tastes like a pie. I paid 8 rand for a coffee. Somehow I think it's not going to be real coffee, but anyway, it's not too bad. At least it's cheap. Coffee also. It's very cheap. It's cheap. Food at a very good price, yeah. At the, next to the spa, this little place. Mixed foods, a lot of spa, very good. I got my food from the devil, Nick, and I think that's my little bit about King Williamstown. At least you got a bit of an overview. I'm gonna drink my coffee now and wait for the taxi to fill up. Got my spots along on the taxi now, we're just waiting for it to fill up and then we're going to Mkata. These guys, apparently these young guys, they're from the bush, they Going to circumcision, somebody's telling me. They're standing around here, one of the masks, one of the huge panga. Apparently, these young boys are about to go through their initiation ceremony somewhere in the bush. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit worried about the trailer because it's standing at this angle and it's probably going to bounce up and down, so I'm worried. After two nights of terrible sleep, I wasn't too worried about the scenery. We arrive in Umtata and I am nervous. I have been warned about the city many times and I seem to be the only white guy in town. Tourists are easy meat and I have to find another taxi to take me to Port St. John's. Got on a minibus taxi to Port St. John's so we are leaving Umtata uh, very heavily loaded. So. I hope the guys aren't going to drive too fast, but it is what it is. I'm back in Port St. John's and relieved that I made it back safe and sound. I'm back in the Transkai, just outside of Port St. John's. I'll be staying here for quite a while. And uh, I'll be catching up on my editing and all the stuff I need to do. 
Do you want to see where I'm walking? It's quite beautiful. Check it out. On the bridge crossing the river. Walking backwards for the sun. This is the end of this little vlog of me traveling here. And exciting things are coming. This time of year it's lots of sun. Not so much rain. It's quite warm now. It's it cold in the evenings. More cars coming. Let's wait for them to pass. I'm DJing tomorrow, which is Friday night and Saturday night at Amapono Backpackers. So I've got a little jobby for a start. <laughs> uh, because it's not easy to survive here. Difficult to get down. Everything takes time. I have to learn to relax and calm down again. Everything is slower here. Yeah. I have to walk quite a while and then take a minibus taxi to get basic groceries and then all the way back. That's half a day at least. Or more just to get basic stuff. So, everything is a bit slower. I'm going to have to learn to be calmer again and excited to be back. I'll show you a bit about the town just a little bit before I end this vlog completely. On that note, if you need a DJ, you could check out my mixes on the website. I can come and entertain you and your friends or people at your place and DJ for you. I'm available. Yesterday on my way from uh, Mtato to Port St. John on a minibus taxi I was thinking about maize cops, fresh maize cops, the cookie at the road stall. But it's a wrong time of year. So this time of year they have different food here that grows in season. But you can buy it at the stores just before the bridge, the Mpanto bridge. And uh, what they have here is sweet potato. They've got nice big avos that grow here everywhere. Bananas some kind of nut and also sugar cane so that's the winter diet for the locals and if you want to buy it in uh, Transkai that's what grows now this time of year just got dropped off at the taxi rank this is town okay see you in the next vlog next vlog I plan to go check out the Lallies. The Lallies are the small settlements in the foothills of Transkai. I love it there. Beep.